All right, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Big Rich. Sunday evening, and they say, Rich, why don't you take a break? Why don't you ever take a break, Rich? And I say, mind your business, you know what I'm saying? And speaking of business, it's time to get a business. For all my smokers, I need you to do what we do best. Jeez. Okay, Jesus. <laughs> <coughs> Bless the atmosphere. You nobody know. God, this ice cream cake is amazing. It's amazing. Anyway. Gangster Spotlight Episode 2. My partner in crime found me a cool article. You already know the name. If you have to ask, don't even ask. But I'll tell you anyway, salute to Shattered. Crazy rainstorm in New York City today, like from this morning to the afternoon. I'm talking about like, you know, typhoon type rain. You know what I mean? All day for those that were in the street driving, they made money today. Business. But we're about to get into ours. And this is a real cool article, like I said, some international drug criminal super cartel. It's fucking nuts. I love this shit. So the title says, Iran allegedly protects Moroccan Dutch drug gangsters. It used to murder its enemies of state abroad. All right, so check this out. The Dutch government and its intelligence service, the AIVD, have strong evidence that Iran not only used Moroccan Dutch gangsters to eliminate two of its enemies of the state on foreign soil, but that it is actively protecting crime bosses by providing them with a safe haven. Well, I think it's a fair deal. If they're going to commit murder for you, you might as well protect them, right? Some James Bond shit, man. Salute to Amsterdam, what's poppin'. Salute to the Netherlands. Salute to Rotterdam. Smoking lovely. Oh, I used to smoke some good hashish out there in Amsterdam. I've been to Amsterdam four times. Done the challenge. You don't want to test me. Anyway, the Dutch Ministry of Justice suspects that the Netherlands' most wanted crime boss, Ridwan Taghi. Ridwan Taghi. Let me put his picture uh, on the screen right now, my man look like P.B. Herman, but he's a gangster and he's a murderer and he's not to be played with. This guy is the most wanted criminal uh, in the Netherlands right now. The Dutch, I'll, I'll start again. The Dutch Ministry of Justice suspects that the Netherlands' most wanted crime boss, Ridawin Tagi, is protected by Iran's secret service, Dutch newspaper reported Friday. Tagi is seen as one of Europe's biggest drug bosses having formed a super cartel with leaders of the Camorra, Irish mob, and Serbian underworld. He is believed to be hiding in Dubai, but according to authorities, makes frequent trips to Iran on fast private yachts. After making the 150-kilometer trip, Tagi allegedly has several safe houses at his disposal. He receives this level of protection from the Iranian government, Dutch justice claims because he was instrumental in helping Iran eliminate one or more of their most wanted enemies of state. For a while, the motive behind the killing baffled investigators. Then it became known that Motamid was really Mohammed Reza Kohali Samadi. I think that's this dude right here. All right, I got pictures for you, man, because I'm not going to just say names without the fucking pictures. Hard to say these names, though, but I get it. A member of the People's Mujahideen of Iran, who, according to Iran authorities, was the mastermind behind the 1981 bombing of the headquarters of the of the Islamic Republican Party, killing over 70 officials. The plot thickened when it came out that the killers were working on the orders of the Moroccan Dutch drug boss, Naufal Fassi. Let me put his picture on the screen. Another drug lord. A close associate of Ridoin Tagi. A fellow gangster once gave the following description of Fasi. No foul is someone he will cut you into pieces. Alleging that he killed so many people he could fill a cemetery but leaves few traces. 
Nafu once shot a guy in the leg. He was sent to prison, came out, and shot the guy in his leg again. To call him crazy is putting it mildly. Dutch authorities agreed in April of 2018, Fassi was sentenced to 18 years in prison after being found guilty of the attempted murder of an underworld rival. Interestingly, two years earlier, Irish police had arrested Fassi in Dublin, where he was living in a property tied to the notorious Kinahan clan. Led by Daniel Kinahan, the group has positioned itself as a dominant crime group in Ireland and is part of an aforementioned super cartel along with Rio Don Taghi, Camaro boss Rafael Periali, and Serbian crime boss Edin Gachanin. Edin Gachanin. I like that. While living under the protection of the Irish Kinahan clan, Fassi received financial support from Richard Eduardo Quelme Vega, a drug boss known as Rico the Chilean, who is close to Taghi and whose organization trafficked tons of cocaine from South America to Europe. This is like a fucking James Bond movie. This shit is amazing. Here's a script right here. I'm giving it to you. It is clear Fassi functioned as an important piece of an extremely intricate puzzle. The Dutch government views him as the link between Taghi and the Iranian Secret Service. But the execution of Mohammed Reza Kohali Samadi, who I put his picture on the screen again, isn't the only murder the Dutch government accuses Iran of having played a role in. In 2017, an assassin shot several bullets into Ahmed Mola Nisi, the leader of the Iranian specialist group Arab Struggle Movement for the Liberation of Awaz. Nisi died in front of his house in The Hague. He had been living in the Netherlands for over a decade. Dutch investigators believe a criminal organization from the port city of Rotterdam was involved in this hit. A break in the murder case of Mohammed Reza Kohali occurred when prosecutors got their hands on a treasure trove of text messages after they were able to unlock a decrypted cell phone of one of the participants in the plot. The two hitmen were discovered to have extensive criminal records and long-standing ties to the underworld. The text messages showed they were monitoring Muhammad and had no clue why he was targeted for death, only that they were assigned with the task and were eager to get the job done. In April of this year, they were sentenced to 25 and 20 years behind bars for their role in the murder. The messages also implicated Fassi, who was found guilty of ordering the murder and sentenced to life in prison. All three remained silent about the co-conspirators. So for now, this is where the buck stops. Two enemies of the state are dead. Fassi and two hitmen are doing significant time in prison. And Taghi, the most wanted fugitive, enjoying protection from the Iranian secret service. The world of secret intelligence and black ops is one of dirty hands. We there and happened in the 1960s with the United States and La Cosa Nostra working alongside Cuban exiles to assassinate Fidel Castro or right now with Iran using violent gangsters to eliminate political enemies. It is impossible for legitimate governments to escape the filth that washes over them as they dip their hands into the criminal world. Well, I'll tell you whose hands are also filthy. The government's hands. Thank you very much. This is a great fucking article. All right. Salute to Gangsters Inc. And uh, David Amoruso. We throw respect on your name, sir. Gangster Spotlight. Sunday night. Light up and blow some smoke in the atmosphere. We'll see you tomorrow for the morning show. Salute.